This is an analysis of angle of attack devices in the general aviation environment presented by the Pegasus Research Team. The purpose of this video is to provide the general aviation pilot with information pertaining to angle of attack concepts, an overview of the benefits of angle of attack displays, demonstrations of several commercial angle of attack installations, and angle of attack display indications during typical maneuvers. To show why angle of attack displays have drawn recent attention, we will discuss loss of control accident case studies, safety enhancement analysis timeline, and angle of attack concepts. Then we will discuss what angle of attack devices are and how they function. We will cover angle of attack sensors and their functionality. We will highlight angle of attack displays by Alpha Systems, Safe Flight, and Bendix King. Finally, we will present how angle of attack displays can be beneficial in various flight conditions, including power off stalls, power on stalls, cross controlled stalls, slips, steep turns, and approach and landing. In accident example number one, the facts are that it was a Cirrus SR-22 flown by a private pilot certificated individual. The aircraft was on left downwind to land, and from the accident report, crashed into trees while turning base to final approach to runway 6 at the Aero Plantation Airport near Waxhaw, North Carolina. The weather was VMC, or Visual Meteorological Conditions, and the pilot was operating VFR. Winds at a nearby airport reported at 310 degrees at 11 knots, gusting to 20 knots. The airport is described as tricky due to runway slopes and surrounding terrain. Here's an illustration of the flight path. As you can see, during the base to final turn, the pilot had a tailwind, and it's possible that the pilot initiated the base to final turn at the normal spot that they always do, which resulted in an overshoot and a potential for a cross-controlled stall. During the evaluation, the NTSB determined the probable cause to be the tailwind condition, which caused a ground speed higher than the airspeed during the base to final turn. To compensate for the increased turning radius due to the higher ground speed, the pilot increased the bank angle. The increased bank angle caused the stall speed to increase, resulting in a stall and subsequent loss of control. The NTSB determined the probable cause to be the pilot's failure to maintain adequate airspeed while maneuvering to land, resulting in an aerodynamic stall. This is the key part of loss of control in flight, where maneuvering flight is the top phase where fatal loss of control in flight is most likely to occur. In the second accident case study, the aircraft was a Beechcraft Bonanza B36TC flown by a commercial pilot. It was operating on instrument flight rules in IMC conditions. The aircraft was destroyed when it impacted terrain near Bundaran Airport, North Garden, Virginia. Ground scars and wreckage evidence were consistent with the airplane being in a spin at the time of impact. The site manager mentioned past flights in which he noted that the pilot had to make, in the manager's opinion, a sharp left turn to avoid terrain before landing on the runway. This is a picture taken from the final approach course, and as you can see, the terrain is varying and the pilot would need to modify the approach path. The NTSB found the probable cause to be the pilot's failure to maintain airspeed while turning onto the final approach which resulted in an inadvertent stall spin and subsequent impact with terrain. In 2011, the General Aviation Joint Steering Committee, or GAJSC, recognized the need to address loss of control accidents and started researching ways to mitigate these events. They tasked the safety analysis team with the analysis of accidents that were caused by loss of control. Following the safety analysis team's findings, the Loss of Control Working Group was founded to research and make recommendations for potential solutions. The Loss of Control Working Group determined that angle of attack displays could be a useful mitigation strategy for general aviation aircraft. Following these findings, the FAA streamlined the approval process for various angle of attack devices, deeming them minor modifications to the aircraft, which require less approval than major modifications. To better understand these devices and how they can be used, let's look at what angle of attack is. Angle of attack is defined by two references. 
One is the cord line, which is an imaginary line drawn from the leading edge to the trailing edge of an airfoil. The other reference is the relative wind, shown in this picture by the arrow marked airflow. Relative wind is equal and opposite to the flight path of the aircraft. The angle of attack is the angle between the cord line and the relative wind. The critical angle of attack is the point at which, as the angle of attack increases, air will no longer flow smoothly over the wing. When this happens, the airflow separates from the surface of the wing, resulting in a stall. The critical angle of attack, or the angle at which the stall occurs, is always constant for a given airfoil in a given configuration. Since the stalling point is only affected by the angle of attack, it is important to note that the wing can stall at any airspeed and any attitude. This is a wing with the flaps in the retracted position. When the flaps are extended, it changes the effective cord of the wing, which increases the angle of attack and results in a momentary increase in lift. To compensate for this new cord line, the pilot will normally adjust the elevator pressure to dissipate this momentary increase in lift to maintain altitude. The result is that an aircraft that has deployed flaps can produce the same lift at a lower angle of attack until the descent profile is initiated. Here is a graph of the coefficient of lift with flaps up and flaps down. As you can see, flaps allow us to maintain the same coefficient of lift at a lower angle of attack which allows for variations in descent profiles. Or, flaps allow us to achieve a greater coefficient of lift for the same angle of attack, which provides for a reduction in approach speeds while maintaining the same amount of lift. Regardless of how a pilot utilizes flaps during an approach, it is important to determine if the angle of attack system being used is calibrated in multiple wing and flap configurations or in a single configuration. Slots or slats allow for a higher coefficient of lift at the same angle of attack because the airflow will not separate from the airfoil at the higher angle of attack. The slots or slats allow the airflow to remain attached to the surface of the wing at higher angles of attack. An AOA device would need to be calibrated for this wing configuration in order to correctly measure the angle of attack at stall or 1.3 times the stall speed. Wing contamination of any type will affect the parasitic drag of the wing. This impact is felt by having to fly a specific airspeed at a higher angle of attack to produce the same amount of lift. The contamination will also cause the airflow to separate earlier than a clean wing, causing higher drag at any angle of attack. Calibration of angle of attack displays could be affected by wing contamination, and information presented may be unreliable if the wing is contaminated. There are two main styles of angle of attack devices. The first is a transducer style, which can be further divided into two subcategories. One subcategory is a vane style, which rotates to align with the relative wind. The other is a tab style, which measures the stagnation point of the airflow impacting the wing. The other AOA device is a pressure style, which measures the vector of the relative wind by comparing the pressure from two different ports. It is important that you are aware, based on the manufacturer of your AOA device, how the angle of attack is being measured. The FAA has disseminated a press release indicating that they are streamlining the process for approval of angle of attack equipment in various aircraft. It is important to note that within the press release, in the design requirements, the FAA has mandated that a placard be placed that indicates that the AOA system is not for use as a primary instrument for flight. Further, within the operational limitations section of the press release, they have stated that an AOA system is non-required and is to be used only as supplemental information to the pilot. It is important to keep these two considerations in mind while utilizing the angle of attack displays. Additionally, the FAA has released an Information for Operators, or INFO, numbered 14010, dated July 25, 2014, which addresses the installation, training, and use of non-required supplemental angle of attack based systems for general aviation airplanes. It is a resource that provides important information for implementation. Here are several examples of AOA displays. Different manufacturers will have different types of displays. How the AOA functions, i.e. the transducer or pressure system, also varies by installation and manufacturer. 
The main takeaway from this slide is that personal preference and aircraft compatibility are the primary considerations. It is important to familiarize yourself with a variety of angle of attack displays and select the one that suits your needs the best. Installation of the optional probe heat function requires some planning. The probe heat will require a separate switch and fuse or breaker along with the appropriate wiring for the length and amount of load carried per advisory circular AC 43.13-1B, Chapter 11, Section 5. The probe heat requires over 7 amps of electrical power. Use shielded wire to minimize interference with other instrumentation and route the wiring such that the risk of a mechanical damage and or damage caused by fluids, vapors, or sources of heat is minimized. Follow the installation manual and use AC43 as discussed in the manual to complete the installation. Properly label the switch and fuse and breaker per the installation manual. Operation of the probe heat does not affect the angle of attack calculations or readings. It is recommended that probe heat be installed if the AOA system will be utilized in the IMC environment. The Alpha Systems and Bendix King devices utilize a three-part system. There is a probe that attaches to an inspection panel on the bottom of the aircraft's wing or fuselage. A computer to process inputs from the probe, which is placed out of sight, usually in the aircraft's cockpit, and the display unit. Installation is simple for aircraft with inspection panels. For aircraft without inspection panels, or that are made of fabric, installation is more complicated, but not impossible. The Safe Flight device utilizes a two-part system. There is a transducer tab that is installed on the leading edge of the wing, and the processing and display unit that is placed in the cockpit in view of the pilot. The transducer tab needs to be positioned on the leading edge of the wing and needs to have a hole cut in the wing. This becomes difficult, but not impossible, on composite aircraft. The probe used in the Alpha Systems and Bendix King devices has two ports, each intaking ram air and sending it to the processing unit. The processor then calculates the difference in ram air pressure between the two ports to determine the direction of the relative wind. The Safe Flight device has a tab on the leading edge of the wing that is moved by the relative wind to sense the stagnation point. It then sends this information to the device in the cockpit to be displayed to the pilot. While simple in theory, the precision of the device and its calibration is what allows it to measure the direction of the relative wind. The Alpha Systems device features an on-speed donut and two carrots indicating what action must be taken to adjust the angle of attack. It can be calibrated from within the cockpit and gives a verbal warning when the aircraft is approaching the stall. This warning is usually in advance of the installed stall system which gives the pilot advanced warning for stall avoidance. The device has multiple audio warning sounds which can be selected by the pilot which are demonstrated now. Too slow. Getting slow. Too slow. The Bendix King device features an on-speed donut and a stall warning arrow indicating that the angle of attack must be reduced. It gives a verbal warning which indicates that the pilot must take action to correct the AOA. It gives a verbal warning when the aircraft is approaching stall. This warning is usually in advance of the installed stall system which gives the pilot advanced warning for stall avoidance. Check AOA. Caution. Too slow. Too slow. Too slow. Too slow. Too slow. The Safe Flight device features an on-speed indicator and a series of multicolored dots that indicate whether the aircraft is over or under speed. Additionally, the device has settable bugs to be used for various different maneuvers. The device gives a Geiger counter warning when the aircraft is approaching stall. This warning is usually in advance of the installed stall system, which gives the pilot advanced warning for stall avoidance. Now we will take a look at how the devices perform in several maneuvers. In the following videos, you will see all three devices side by side. The maneuver being performed will be the same for all three and you can see an outside view for reference below the angle of attack device. When you see a green box around a device, you are listening to the audio from that system. 
The first maneuver we will see is a power off stall. All three devices perform as expected during this maneuver, gradually increasing their indication before giving a warning to the pilot. Now we will see a power on stall. The indications of the displays during the maneuver are very similar to the power off stall. Getting slow. Too slow. Too slow. Too slow. Next is a cross-controlled stall, which simulates overshooting the base to final turn. In this maneuver, the pilot presses on the inside rudder and maintains a constant bank with opposite aileron, creating a cross-controlled situation. This can quickly lead to a low-altitude stall and spin if the pilot is not careful. Again, the devices perform as expected and provide a warning to the pilot. Check AOA. Caution. Too slow. Caution. Too slow. Depending on the system, slips can provide very different indications. The Alpha systems in Bendix King devices must have a clean flow of air, not obstructed by any objects on the wing. During a slip, objects such as tie-down rings or landing gear struts can obstruct the airflow and give erroneous indications. Let's see how the three devices indicate a slip. Let's take a look at some steep turns. Performing this maneuver with these devices is a great demonstration of how the wing increases in load factor during a level turn. With the displays, you can visually watch the aerodynamic change as the bank angle increases. This is an indication of the increasing load factor on the wing, which requires an increased angle of attack to maintain altitude. Now we will watch a normal approach to landing. Depending on how each device is calibrated and the type of approach being conducted, the pilot should aim to hold a consistent indication during the approach. The devices we are demonstrating were calibrated to approach at the on-speed indication, which provides a stabilized approach. This is one of the key benefits of these devices, as they can provide valuable information about the approach that cannot be obtained in any other way. In this video, we have shown you why angle of attack devices and lift indicators have become prevalent and why they are valuable. We have also given you specific information about certain systems, but note that there are other manufacturers and systems available. The biggest takeaway from this video is that these devices can provide valuable information to the pilot during maneuvering flight and have been identified as a mitigation strategy to prevent loss of control accidents. It is important to take this information and make it informed yet personal decision about what is the right choice for you. Every pilot is different, and every device has advantages and disadvantages for each individual and each aircraft type. We hope that we have provided you with some information that you can utilize to make your own decision regarding angle of attack devices and lift indicators.